first panel of the day starts in a few moments, and we're going to talk, talk loudly about something, which is always in three letters. Nobody actually knows a lot about it, but everybody has to do this with their hats because something is coming again. Some of us are prepared, some are not. So maybe it is time to open a subject appearing for preparing for NIS2. What to expect? That's the thing we're going to talk about now. Kad govorimo o NIS2 direktivi, to je veoma važna direktiva koja se odnosi um, na kibernetičku sigurnost. Ona postavlja brojne uh, nove obaveze pred organizacije i prosto je sasvim uh, logično da ne znamo puno o tome, ali ima ljudi koji znaju. Ili moraju znati za ovaj panel. Koliko vas je čulo za ovo ruke gore? How many of you heard about this? Okay, how many of you know what to do about it? Koliko vas zna što bi trebalo s tim? Sjajno, znači na pravom mjestu. Dobro smo na pravom mjestu. Na pravom mjestu. I uh, evo, pozivamo moderatora ovog panela, Dragana Petrića, ekskluzivnog direktora Bug HR. Hello, Dragan, nice to have you. Good morning. You have a big thing to do in a few minutes. You can join us up on the stage because Dragan will be asking questions. He is part of Bug HR, the guys who first started doing nice things on the web and still keep doing it like that way. <laughs> Welcome. Thank Make you. Place, Thank you. Panelists, Sretno. time is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be at the biggest security event here in this region. So we don't have much time. I will start and uh, introduce my guests today. So the first one, uh, Branislav Dobrosavljevic. Branislav, please welcome on the stage. Branislav is coming from Advanced Cybersecurity. Next, we have Yasmina Zemovic, head of SecOps. And Vansel Cheshati. Did I pronounce it well? Cool. From Huawei Technologies. Uh, in my script, uh, we had announced Branko Jakula, but uh, he was unable to join us today. So, guys, good morning and welcome. B before we start, just a few words about uh, what you do in your company in 30 seconds. Branislav, let's start with you. Uh, ACS, Advanced Cybersecurity, is a company from Belgrade. It is very important that it is a small company, but it is a modern uh, type of uh, managed security services company. And uh, we expect that the future will be ours. I will say uh, in, in my answers a little more about some elements. Cool. Yasmin, please introduce your company uh, and your role in the company. Thank you. I work in many places, but let's say that my, my primary job uh, description is defensive security to actually provide that everything uh, in my company is safe and secure in terms of cybersecurity. Cool. Well, so we all know about Huawei technologies, but what is your role there and where are you, where are you seated? Yes, uh, uh, welcome everyone. Um, Good morning. So I'm the cybersecurity and privacy officer for Huawei Technologies for the Adriatic region in Hungary and responsible for the internal compliance and also external communication to customers. Cool. Thank you. So we saw many of you know what NIS2 is, but uh, quite few of you know what to do with it, as we saw when uh, Frano asked you. So. Branislav, let's start with you. Can you please explain us, as, as we are eight-year-olds, what this NIS2 regulative or directive is and how is it different to the previous one, the first one, the NIS? Uh, thank you. First, it is a real pleasure to, to be here in, in such a panel. Uh, uh, it is a very hot topic and we have a short time, so we will try all to... To, to be as quick as possible. Be, uh, 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 so... In few words, uh, uh, first NIC uh, directive uh, from 2018 uh, was uh, uh, somehow hand in hand with GDPR for, for uh, privacy. And uh, it was first time uh, for the cybersecurity to be somehow regulated at the EU level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting that uh, uh, almost when it was, uh, it was implemented, they started to work to this new directive, NIC2, which was uh, uh, adopted uh, in, at the beginning of 2023. And uh, that's interesting that in seven days, there is a term for all EU countries 
to have uh, uh, that uh, their laws on cybersecurity harmonized with with uh, that directive. Uh, somehow, for the people uh, in EU who were involved with with original NIC directive and especially implementing, for example, uh, uh, ISO standards uh, twenty seven thousand. It is not so new as, as that, that is discussed in the newspapers, but uh, there will be a lot of new companies involved with that. We will discuss a lot about exactly about that. Uh, so in few words for, for the guys for, for whom uh, uh, it is new, I will stress these new things okay. in, in, in uh, uh, NIC2 uh, directive. It is uh, that operations of, of ex essential services have, have been uh, uh, singled out. And for us here, it is very important that the digital services providers have been noted even in, in the beginning of the directive as the a very important part. Uh, the number of companies we will discuss that will be much, much higher. For example, we have in small countries like Slovenia and Belgium, that they found that it is uh, 30 to 40,000 companies that will be involved now, comparing to only a few thousand th that was on original okay. NIC directive. Uh, then uh, much stronger requirements for everybody uh, included uh, regarding uh, risk management. Uh, um, very important is that uh, uh, dealing with, with uh, uh, attacks and especially reporting the government is now very strict. It mm -hmm. is three days for the first report, seven days for, for, for a detailed report, and 30 days for full analysis. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very strict and different than it was. And at the end, uh, it is very important that uh, uh, top management in uh, uh, the companies, organizations, is now strictly and, and directly responsible for all aspects of implementation of cybersecurity. Okay, so Jasmine, tell us a bit more about it. Uh, so many more companies will now be affected and they will have to implement new cybersecurity measures in, in their uh, operations. Uh, to my understanding, there are, there are two levels of companies that have to do two different things depending on how big they are. So how will the NIS2 impact the security requirements for businesses operating in Europe? Uh, thank you, great question. Uh, basically, it depends uh, of our essential or important category. Okay. So uh, in the first one, uh, there's 18 industries uh, which were required uh, by must, mandatory to have the security baseline. So basically everything below security baseline uh, will be not enough to actually do the business. Uh, additional seven uh, in important category, uh, a little bit you know, relaxing, but again, uh, it will be required to do some different security approach uh, uh, than, than so far. Uh, if I look from my pair of shoes, uh, infosec, infosec security, programming, etc., cetera, uh, basically uh, it is not a uh, revolution, even it's an evolution. So the, if the company uh, have the security vertical, uh, by that I mean, uh, I don't know, uh, security, VIP, CISO, uh, and so on, uh, and some kind of, of certification compliance, ISO, uh, SOC2, and, and etc. So you are on a good track to actually just to, to, to do some polish, do your risk management as a one of, of important things. Then based on that, when you accept the risk or mitigate the risk, do some additional uh, security, uh, infosec security, uh, inside uh, your business uh, uh, process. So uh, again, uh, from my pair of shoes, uh, if I can identify the most important two uh, uh, elements uh, to be better uh, uh, than uh, until now, they are instant response. So the, the now by the by the law, I need to report uh, in matter of hours any data breach uh, with some. I don't know how to say impact on, on our side. Yes. So if I if I cover that, uh, then it will be some huge penalty amount of, of euros mm -hmm. and US dollars. So it will be expensive to, to my to my business. So I need to report. Is, uh, is it defined how you have to report it, or just send an email to some authority uh, to the government? I, uh, you have to, to to send the email, then notify your customers. So okay. basically, okay. is on, on two tracks. Uh, uh, the second one part is supply chain security. 
uh, it's kind of new, new stuff. Uh, uh, in COVID-19, uh, that term was actually popped up, especially in famous solar uh, winds bridge and fire eye. Uh, we have the Russian state actor actually behind that. So uh, in, a, in a nutshell, uh, if you don't pay attention on your supply chain, uh, that means electricity, water supply, uh, source code. If you, for example, uh, implement third-party libraries inside your uh, project without additional checking, uh, that third-party uh, library can have some kind of malicious elements inside that can be used to, to access to your infrastructure and your client infrastructure. So basically, these are the two, the two most important elements and security awareness, but maybe we can speak about that later. Okay, so Vessel, uh, Huawei, it's a huge worldwide company. Uh, you have operations in every country, in European Union, outside European Union, I, outside Europe. I suppose there are people here in the audience with a similar situation. They have operations both in European Union and outside European Union. Uh, so not all of them are affected by NIS2 directive. What steps should companies like yours or like someone from the audience take now to prepare for an IS2 directive? Yes, so um, first of all, uh, if somebody thinks that they are not affected by NIS2 because they are out of EU, uh, they might be in a danger. Why? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they can be also a supplier to a company which is under in the scope of NIS2. Therefore, you know, NIS2 directive, especially the supply chain management, is crafted in a way that basically the company who is in scope has to, sorry, there is some. Uh, so the company who is in this two scope has to make sure that all the suppliers follow at least the basic, you know, uh, security hygiene. So, and that must be enforced. By enforcing, it means, uh, you know, they, uh, the company has to uh, sign a cybersecurity agreement with all the suppliers. And not only that, they have to somehow make sure that there is a mechanism so that they can enforce, you know, whether that supplier has, uh, uh, you know, fulfilled those or not. But, you know, uh, also the question is about uh, how do we track whether we are in this two scope or not? Because in EU, you know, there are uh, 27 countries. And this two is a directive. The directive is basically saying that, okay, these are the main things that must be followed. But it's up to the member state to interpret those directives and transpose it to the local legislation. And this is very important because, and, and this is the trick, many countries uh, choose a way of, you know, maybe they can accept uh, ISO 27001 or SOC 2 and such certifications. Okay, if you have that, that's done. Other countries, like uh, my country, uh, Hungary, decided, okay, we will adopt uh, the NIS2 into the Hungarian legislation. And we also provide a very detailed list of, you know, guidelines, how this must be implemented. So, uh, and what I can recommend to all companies here is to look at the legislation progress. For example, in Croatia, uh, a draft has been just released and it's for public consultation. Uh, so you have to check whether your company will be uh, most likely impacted or not. And if it's impacted, you have to raise the awareness of the leadership. It's very important that the leadership understand that this will be a legislation. We may get, uh, or they may get penalties if they, you know, do not uh, uh, um, follow. follow that. Yeah. Exactly. And do not uh, implement those guidelines. Uh, in Huawei, I'm a bit lucky because uh, in our company, the cyber security is a top priority and our leadership is already aware of this. Yeah. So I, I do not have, but I can understand other companies may have a, a difficulty, you know, persuading why this is a, a must. Okay. So while I was preparing for this uh, discussion, I learned that Bosnia, where we are now, is actually the only country in the region without any cyber security law or regulation, not affected by either ANS2 or previous ANS directive or any other directive, and yet we are here at security summit, the biggest one in the region. Is there anybody from, from Bosnia here willing to comment in the audience? Maybe you, Wenzel, what do you think about it? The only country in the region without any cybersecurity law or regulation. 
yes, indeed, but still, you know, the companies itself, uh, uh, even without the cybersecurity law, it is their own business interest uh, to make sure that they, you know, uh, meet at least the basic requirement. And we have seen two nice, great presentations yeah. which talk about what could happen exactly if this is not in place. So, okay, law is, is a good thing. Uh, because it can enforce, you know, uh, several things. Because, uh, and and you know, the the problem is not with the large organizations. All the large organizations, just like Huawei or any other, they understand why, why it's important. Also, their leadership understand. But the smaller and medium enterprises, this is where we have the problem, where there are, you know, either less resources or less money. Less resources, uh, maybe they work with one or two IT guys. Mm -hmm. And they have to take care of cybersecurity as well. Or simply the, the leadership just don't think that, you know, they have to pay too much attention yeah. to this. So, Branislav, we, we came to the matter of money. Uh, is it costly to implement NIS2? And how can organizations balance the cost of compliance with the benefits of enhanced security under NIS2? Yeah, definitely. There will be a price for, for that. You understood already. And um, I found the number that it is 0.3% of, of, of annual income will be needed for implementation of that for, for European uh, countries. Okay. Uh, probably it is the, the most tricky question in, in yes. this panel, uh, not only for cybersecurity, but, but for, for any investment in IT and other areas which are not bringing back direct benefits for, for, for the owners. But uh, I may say that at least two things are, are needed for that. Uh, one is awareness, uh, special programs to, to raise awareness of top uh, uh, level of the companies, especially smaller ones. And second is, as it is visible already in GDPR implementation, uh, uh, it is somehow well-measured and credible threat of fines. Uh, for both, we have very good basic in, in directive itself, but we'll see how it will be implemented in local laws, especially in this region. Yeah, so Yasmin, will, will the employee training and awareness that Branislav is talking about be the biggest costs for the company? Uh, no. Uh, no? The, 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 the training uh, is a must, is a mandatory, uh, okay. but not only for the IT staff. Not just for, for the for the professionals, but the, for the entire the stack. entire stack, yes, okay. uh, and not only for the compliance, not, not only to, to to pass the the, the 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 threshold to be cool, to be okay, to actually to pre prevent uh, because people problem is actually a security problem. So uh, it's a process, not the final state. So if we not invest in the people and training, uh, exercise, uh, and, and and so on. It's just a matter of time for scenario like this yeah. for a couple of more minutes. Will this training be continuous? Like every employee will have to go, I don't know, once a year uh, uh, to once some year, workshop? Once a year, at, at, least, at least half and once a year. To okay. actually, not only just the clicks A, B, C, D, okay. then a real exercise. I will send you an official emails mm -hmm. to actually to see how we respond mm -hmm. on, on, on the real threats. Of, of course, the fake, but the real threats. Okay. Is it uh, left to the companies to test their employees if the workshop went well and if they learned what they needed to learn? Or is it to the trainers? Or will nobody be testing the employees? How will it uh, be yeah, in it's practice? Up, it's up the company. Up uh, to so, company. Yes. Okay. So unfortunately, uh, there is no, un until NIC2, there is no any, any pressure to, to force it. Mm -hmm. But I hope now it will be mandatory to, to, do, to do it in the right way. So, Wenzel, how are companies effectively monitoring? and reporting incidents and uh, what is being taken by ANAS2, how can the regulators or the governments actually check if the company is compliant? Yes, so um, first of all, let me just uh, uh, add to this. Uh, so the awareness is very important and it should uh, include all employees of a company including the leadership and this is very important. So even the leadership has to go through all the you know, trainings and that training, uh, so answering to your question, must include also the incident management uh, uh, principles as well. How to detect and how to report any incident. This is very important because 
uh, incident has to be identified, and as soon as it's identified, has to be within 24 hours reported to the uh, National Cybersecurity Center or any other authority. Uh, the other source of an incident could be, you know, using tools. Uh, there can be endpoint detection uh, and response systems or network detection and response systems which can identify uh, that, you know, there is, a, there is an incident, there is a cyber attack going on. And then, uh, of course, you know, uh, they report it to the IT team or the security team, the SOC team, and then uh, that incident must be investigated and then reported uh, uh, within 24 hours to the authority and, and after 72 hours the first report must be also sent. Within month, one month the full report has to be ready. Okay. So that's the rule. Yeah, so Branislav, today we usually help ourselves with artificial intelligence tools a lot to do some boring stuff like, like reporting, like learning something that we never thought we will have to uh, how can uh, companies leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning to comply with ANAS2? Uh, first, uh, all the security solutions, even this time, especially speaking about next few years, will be uh, uh, AI ML based solutions. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, your, your question is, in fact, uh, how to reach such a big number of companies which will be uh, coming under scrutiny of, of this directive, especially for smaller ones. And uh, uh, the answer to that is uh, that uh, MSPs, that is managed services uh, uh, security providers, are the main solution for, for, for that. On all conferences I attended this year, that was the hot topic and then the conclusion was something mm -hmm. uh, uh, like that. Uh, and uh, so if you are approaching uh, with the solutions which are achievable by, by smaller companies generally, uh, then you will include, in fact, all the aspects, needed aspects of, of AI and ML. And, and just, uh, uh, I said that our company is the example of that. Uh, uh, unfortunately, very, very rare. We have our uh, uh, software solution, CM uh, platform, uh, very modern. We have our uh, security operation center, SOC. And also we are as special uh, CERT involved with national CERT in, in all the national campaigns of, of awareness to the cybersecurity. Uh, we expect that the future will be mushrooming of such a companies and then we are ready to, to make a kind of associations of those small for small, you know, to, to make it achievable to, to SMEs and to compete with the big ones. Yes, I mean, nobody wants to come to the point where they have to write any report because that would mean they were under attack. So what strategies can businesses adopt to stay ahead of evolving cyber threats under oh. NIS2? In, in a nutshell, it's a proactive approach. Uh, so uh, you need to, to think ahead. You need to, to analyze uh, your security portfolio. You need to, to analyze uh, threats, incidents, and based on that, like a feedback loop into security awareness training, uh, inject these new elements, especially to, to see how employees react on the, on the, on the upcoming threats. So AI uh, is, is a, is a two-phase uh, sword, so it can help us, yeah. but it can hurt us really bad. Uh, it can also help hackers. Yes, yes. So, yeah. so uh, AI uh, is a one of, of, the, of the new, 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 new things uh, is on the horizon. It's already there. It, it, it will stay there for a long time period. So we need to, to adapt to actually uh, use them to, to prevent ourselves and protect ourselves uh, on the future attacks and to help us to, to yeah. be more proactive. Yes. So, Wenzel, how will NS influence the development of cybersecurity tools? And will it actually influence the development of cybersecurity tools and technologies in, let's say, next decade? Uh, yes, it will. And also, you may remember the, like, uh, five years ago, there was a buzzword, zero trust. And all the tools were sold, you know, as a, with this, uh, okay, zero trust, uh, this zero trust, that, and, and buy this tool, and then you will uh, immediately, you know, implement a zero trust solution. Uh, I expect the same with NIST2, that, you know, the, the solution and product providers will come with tools like 
okay, buy this tool and you will be needs to comply. Mm -hmm. Don't believe them. That's mm -hmm. very important because there is no, you know, one-stop solution. Uh, NISTO is much more complicated than that. Uh, but of course, you know, because NISTO requires awareness raising, uh, reporting, uh, uh, incident detection, risk management, those tools which support this and automate this, this is very important, automate because then you will need less resource to implement, uh, will definitely be uh, improved. So, for example, uh, phishing simulation tools, employee awareness mm -hmm. training tools, uh, GRC, you know, which can help uh, with the compliance as well towards NISTO and uh, incident management and reporting. Maybe, you know, there will be a tool which will automate the incident reporting to the... Oh my God, sounds expensive. Sounds like everybody will right. have to employ head of cybersecurity guy. And, and will, will this guy be reporting to head of IT guy or to CTO, to CEO, to whom? Uh, if I may jump in, uh, yeah. so, so security is not an IT, so it needs to be uh, vertical, independent to the actual to see a company or, okay. or GM. So if if it's under the IT or, or, or similar, it's a conflict of interest. So basically, IT cannot prescribe the, the something for themselves and check themselves. So security is a corrective factor in that. So everybody will have to have the guy. Uh, I, I will say so. Okay, yeah. this, will this guy have to be? I don't know if you're running an airline, does he have to be member of the board? Yeah, okay. Vessel. Yeah, just to add uh, from my example. So okay. actually I have uh, two reporting lines. I, I, I report to the regional CEO okay. and also to on, on a, on a uh, cyber security level to the European regional uh, cyber security officer, which is good. But also on global level, you know, the chief global cyber security officer is reporting to the chairman of the board yeah. at Huawei. And yeah. this is very important. It's independent. Also, we have a uh, independent cyber security lab, lab, which is absolutely independent from the business. Okay. That is to make sure that, you know, all the verification that is done on products and services we, we develop is, is, is done carefully. Yeah. And, uh, Sounds like the highest paid guy in the company in the near future. So Branislav, for this guy, what are the most common pitfalls he will have to face uh, trying to achieve? We, we and I still... Yeah, yeah, we already discussed that all, but I okay. will try just to, in a minute to, to, to summarize. Okay. That is a, a, a lack of qualified information security and IT personnel. Uh, then lack of awareness among, among both top management and IT staff. Uh, uh, then it is a lack of technical solutions and services available for a wide range mm -hmm. of the companies needed for NIST 2 newly. Uh, then objective and subjective difficulties in securing a dedicated budget for, for cybersecurity and uh, also not existing or weak we saw in, in Bosnia but not only then in, also in, in all, all the region uh, not existing or weak legislative institutional uh, infrastructure and uh, governmental support from that. And of course, uh, a lot of other things which are generally mm -hmm. uh, in all uh, uh, company level programs and, and, and projects. Okay. Yasmin, are there any lessons that we can learn from maybe other countries outside EU who have probably implemented some similar directives or laws uh, that can be now implemented that can maybe we can learn something from other mistakes? Is there anything like that? Uh, yes, we can learn from, from, from many mistakes. Uh, if you just uh, track the cybersecurity incidents globally, uh, each one is a lesson. So okay. there is no to, just to pay attention to, to the, on the country level, uh, on the region, uh, just to pay attention uh, on the world around you, on the incidents, and try to learn from them. Uh, because uh, uh, that's the only place when you, when you can see uh, uh, how things get, can go bad and how can you prevent that, that same things happen happen to you. So I will not, not say anything in, in, in globally, just focus on, on incidents and globally and, and try to, to, okay. to fix them. Vensel, we heard the first directive was introduced not long ago, maybe a decade. How did you think? No, no, no. Even, even less. 20, 2018. 18, okay. So less than a decade. It's only six years ago. Mm -hmm. Can we expect you to release the NS3 <laughs> in some near future? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, Why not? Because, it, first of all, you know, first, this needs to has to be digested by many <laughs> okay. companies. And I, if, 
you know, this is properly implemented in all countries, then we already reach a higher level of cybersecurity, okay. in my view. Uh, and, and of course, you know, this NIST two is, is broad enough, it's comprehensive enough. Of course, there will be some minor, uh, you know, adjustments. But what I think as a next step will be um, not NIST two, but the CRA. CRA is the Cyber, uh, Critical Resilience Act. Okay. Cyber Security Resilience Act, which addresses the cyber security of products, digital products. Okay, because NISTU is mainly for organizations okay. overall cyber security, and the CRA, which is currently in draft version, uh, discussed in EU, uh, will be responsible for to ensure that you know whatever product uh, you use. Uh, has the proper cyber security features. Yeah, and then we will meet again and talk about that and at some Let of the be. upcoming uh, Adria Security Summits. Guys, thank you very much. We ran out of our 30 minutes. Maybe if we have questions, we have time for one question from the audience. Anybody? No? Then I will give my mic to the MC. Rano, thank you guys very much for the participation.